So we're going to test out some golf balls today with a bowl of water. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome to the Mobile Club Maker. I'm AJ, I hope you're having a wonderful day. So, as I said in the title, testing golf balls like Bryson. Now that doesn't mean we're going out to the range to try and hit 400 yard drives or try and dial in our single length irons or anything like that. What we are looking at today is measuring these golf balls and trying to find where the center of gravity is using this bowl of water. Now, truth be told, it's not just water. It's a mixture of water and Epsom salts. And even though I said this is how Bryson does it, I don't want you to think that this is some sort of new idea. This method has been around for decades. People have been trying to figure out where the center of gravity is on a golf ball using this method. And basically what we're trying to do here is adding Epsom salt to water so that we can get a golf ball to float in the water. Once we have that, we can then figure out is the center of gravity in the center of the golf ball or is it possibly a little bit off? Is it a little bit towards one of the edges, one of the sides? What that can cause or what that can lead to is, in theory, if you have a golf ball that doesn't have a central center of gravity, it can lead to golf balls going offline after you hit them because that center of gravity is sort of tugging them one way or the other, to put it simply. So the idea here is you find a golf ball, you find its center of gravity, and then if it has one, you would play that center of gravity in sort of a up and down orientation so that the ball is gonna be rolling or spinning end over end like this, as opposed to if that center of gravity is off to the side, it could sort of tilt things and cause the ball to move offline one way or the other. So that's why golfers have been doing this for a very long time, including Bryson, who has been documented as saying that he soaks his golf balls to try and find the center of gravity and go through the you know boxes of balls and find ones that are no good and get rid of those and just keep the ones that are what he considers satisfactory. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna to show you how to go through the process real quick and then we're gonna do just a little test, a little competition between a few different golf balls. So I've got some Pro V1s, I've got some TaylorMade TP5Xs, and I've got some Callaway Chrome Soft. Uh, these are yellow, but same as the white version. Okay, so what do you need for this and what do you need to prepare the water solution? Well, the solution is very simply just two parts water for every one part Epsom salt. You can use whatever size container you want as long as it's big enough to fit a golf ball. So in this bowl, I think I've got about two cups of water and one cup of Epsom salt. Uh, warm water or hot water is going to be better just because it's quicker in dissolving the Epsom salt. If you do it with cold water, you're gonna be stirring for a while. I'm also gonna be using a Sharpie so I can put a point, put a dot on where the supposed center of gravity is showing up. So what's basically gonna happen when you do this is the heaviest part of the golf ball is going to want to sink towards the bottom. And so the heaviest point will drop to the bottom. Then we're gonna put a dot on the opposite pole of the golf ball and that's gonna tell us sort of the axis, the axis where you have the center of gravity. Okay, so I had the full intention of doing this sort of test this sort of competition between these three golf balls in one way, which was I was going to take each of the golf balls, put them in the water, let them come to that natural resting position where the heaviest point was down, put the dot on it, and then basically take the ball again and sort of put it in maybe at 90 degrees to that position or 180 degrees to that position. Pick one of those depending on how long it takes and basically set it in there and time it and see how long it takes for it to go from that position back to that natural resting position with the heaviest point down. I would time each of them and then taking all that information, that would sort of tell me you know, how out of balance these golf balls were because my thinking being the heavier sided a golf ball is, the more the center of gravity is off, the more that weight is moved to one particular area, 
the faster that ball is going to want to return to that area when it's sitting in the floating in the water. If the ball is more centered, if the center of gravity is right there in the middle, well then it's going to take much longer for that ball to sort of work its way back to that natural, that natural uh, resting point. So in that way that would tell us, well if it moves really quickly, that ball obviously is a little more out of round, a little more out of round as far as center of gravity goes. If it takes a long time, that means that ball's center of gravity is much more centered. What I quickly realized when I started doing some just sort of tests on this just to get my bearings was I have underestimated how good these golf balls are because what I ended up doing was putting the golf ball in, getting that dot, going back, turning it a little bit, putting it in again, and what ends up happening is the ball doesn't go back to that same dot. It doesn't go to that same resting position. It moves to different resting positions. So what that tells me is, well, the center of gravity is obviously a lot better than I was thinking. However, I think we can still sort of try and figure out, even that being the case, if there is a, a you know, noticeable difference in the center of gravity between these balls. So what we're going to do instead is I'm going to do the same basic process, only we're basically just going to take each ball. I'm going to do two balls from each of these three sleeves. We're going to drop each of them in randomly with a little spin each time. We're going to see where they come to rest, and we're going to mark it with a dot. We're going to do it between 10 and 20 times. We'll see how the dot pattern is looking as we go, but we'll do each of them the same number of times. And at that point, we'll try and figure out, is there some sort of grouping? Is there some sort of pattern that we can discern that would tell us, oh, this ball has a little bit more uh, weight positioned in a certain area versus it being right there in the center of the ball. And hopefully we'll see some sort of difference between them or maybe they'll all end up being about the same. So we're going to go through that process. I'm going to put it on this little uh, GoPro here so you can watch me go through it. And then we will come back and discuss the results. Okay, so we just finished giving all these golf balls a bath and the results were, I'm going to say, pretty surprising. Even though I went into this saying that I thought the centers of gravity were pretty uh, centered because the test balls that I had used didn't give me much uh, to go off of. But when I actually did more than one ball, what we ended up finding was, uh, where were we here, like the Titleists, the first Titleist I did had sort of kind of a random all over the place uh, pattern to it, which tells me that the center of gravity is pretty close to the center. However, the other one that I did from that exact same sleeve of balls was very focused in one particular area. Same thing with the TaylorMade. One of these TaylorMades had a pattern basically sort of all over the golf ball. So telling me again that the center of gravity was pretty uh, centered. But the other one had an extremely tight pattern on where it was coming up and balancing out in that water. The balls that actually did the best of the three were by far the Callaways, so much so that I went and did the third ball in the sleeve just to sort of double check it. And even though the third one I think was probably the most uh, clustered together as far as what the dots showed, they were still not nearly as clustered together as they were with the Titleist or with the TaylorMade. And with the other two balls, they were pretty much all over the place, again telling me that the center of gravity is much more in the middle of this golf ball. So 
I think the thing to really take away from this is you just don't know because you can get one golf ball out of a sleeve and see that the pattern is sort of all over the place telling me that the center of gravity must be pretty good. And then the next ball in that exact same sleeve had a much more definitive pattern telling me that the weighting is definitely a little more off on this ball. So, you know, and obviously it happened in all three of these to different extents. The TaylorMade had by far the tightest grouping with that one golf ball. So that ball, I would say Bryson DeChambeau would not be using. Uh, the Titleists were a little bit wider as far as on the worst of the three, but still pretty clustered together. That is a pretty tight little pattern there. So again, not a great ball to use in most cases, I would guess. And the Callaway, again, and I can't even find which one is which, but in general, was a much better performer. Now, this is clearly just a very, very, very small test based off of golf balls that I had around the house. Uh, if we did this with more different sleeves, the results we get might be different. Now, I did get another sleeve of Titleist Pro V1s that I had from a different box that was probably a year or so earlier. And the pattern that I got with those was, again, I had one where the pattern was sort of very all over the face of the ball. And the other one was definitely more consistent to one hemisphere of the ball, but not nearly as tight as some of the other examples that we have here. So not nearly as uh, heavy on one side. So there you go. This may be something you wanna try if you've got some golf balls lying around just to sort of see what you get. I think I'm gonna to have to do another video where I take these golf balls out to the putting green and actually try them in the different orientations, both having that heavy side in the up and down uh, position and sort of having them maybe at the side position where the weight is more to one side and see if we can sort of discern any sort of difference when you're actually on a putting green. Is it, is it actually going to cause you to miss putts? But that'll be a video upcoming. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please go down below, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can be alerted when I post new videos. I am on Patreon now. You can support me there at AJ Golf, and you can also find me on Instagram at Mobile Clubmaker. I hope you enjoyed the video. We will see you next time. Take care.